You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. What does it mean to live an honest life? The more honest you are, the more strong your boundaries are. True honesty is going to be able to be clear. It might be complex, but it can be very clear. And that's why it makes sense with all the things we've talked about prior to this, that your actions reflect your words, your words reflect your action. For me, having that sense of self-trust, understanding my sense of self-worth, like this all goes into that peacefulness that I feel of living an honest life. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today for a new episode of the A Bit From Within podcast. My name is Felicia, and every week I come here to share a little bit from within. I am a self-care specialist and a certified astrologer, and what I do is help people of all different stages, ages, life paths learn that they are worthy of loving themselves, and with that self-love comes the desire to take care of yourself, to understand yourself in a new way. And I do that through a variety of ways, through self-care tools like yoga, meditation, mindfulness practices, as well as using astrology to help us be inspired to do those things in a different way each day, each month, um, but also to be able to look at your own natal chart and understand what is happening for you energetically. It's so funny because this week in particular, I've been doing quite a few readings. I had like more than five, which is a little bit more than usual for me in a week, um, at least at this point. But over and over, we've been having these conversations where as I describe something that I see in the chart, like I see the person's jaw just drop and they're like, yes, like that is exactly how I am. Or nobody's put words to that part of myself before. And I have to say that is one of the most gratifying moments. Um, in fact, last night I was with a group of friends. We, it was one of like a Galentine's girls night with one of my just favorite group of, of women. And one of them has a just a lovely teenage son who was there with his girlfriend. And they were sitting down with us for a little while as we started talking about astrology. And um, right now I'm working through this series on TikTok that's all about when you start to learn about astrology, you learn you first learn your big three. So you know your sun sign. Most people know your sun sign. That's the, the zodiac sign that you call yourself. Like, I am a Cancer. I'm a Taurus. Like, that's that's what they're referring to is your sun sign. And then you have your rising sign, which is determined by the exact time of day you were born. And then your moon sign. This completes your big three. Your moon sign is connected to the deepest parts of yourself, your deepest wants, things that not everyone can see about you. So, um, you know, we were just talking about different astrology and I, I looked up her chart just to just to kind of talk a little bit about these things like how do you how do you honor your rising sign? How do you nurture your moon sign? You know, what are some ways you can do that? And as I was looking at her chart, I noticed that she has a Scorpio moon and I had just done a deep dive on this um, placement. And one of the things I shared with her is I'm like, one thing I've noticed is that um, Scorpio moons tend to silently suffer. They, they, they want to suffer in silence. Um, They don't like to ask for help with their healing or their regenerating or anything. And it was so funny because she kind of just like, like her eyes kind of widened and then she kind of looked away and come to find out that she had a really bad knee injury that she just recovered from. And the whole time she just kept being like, it's fine. I'm fine. But her knee was so swollen. You could tell that she was in so much pain, but even physically she couldn't put words to that. You know, she kind of felt like she had to suffer in silence. And that was just kind of, it was one of those moments where it's, you are helping people understand things about themselves. And, you know, maybe we'll talk about this more throughout today's episode, but the theme of feeling broken often comes up during astrology readings. Um, Things that you have been self-conscious about or told are character defects or things that are just horrible about you in a, in a broad, broad spectrum of characteristics, right? It could be everything from being really impatient to being really type A to being super emotional or to being not emotional at all. Like there's, depending on who you're talking to, they're going to see that in a way that can put that, those parts of you down. And personally, I feel like 
so much of what initial astrology work can do is help you recognize that like you are not broken. You've never been broken, that you're likely being exactly who you've always meant to to be um, or who you're meant to be, who you are. And are there ways that we can recognize that? And then if you want to kind of hack it for you, Yes. <laughs> and I, and I say that importantly, like if you want to, like, um, recently I did an, another session for a, just a lovely woman who we we're talking about how she is a little bit more of a complex dynamic that she's juggling because she's a, a really even balance between like feeling intuitive water sign, but then also very analytical and, um, intellectual air signs. And so we were talking about how to blend that. We were talking about how um, where her moon sign is, feelings are very hard to feel um, or even to understand what feelings are. And so I was sharing with her, I'm like, if that's something, like, again, you're not broken. You are who you are. And if that's something you want to improve on for you, the way that her mind works, the way that her energetic patterns work, it might be worth exploring researching well what does anger feel like because she's such a good researcher her mind works for research and understanding things analytically and processing them intellectually so what is anger what is sadness what do other people feel in their body when they feel those things and then that can start to open the door for recognizing it in her own self in her own life and for her that just really seemed like something she was really excited about, just a different way of thinking about things that could be more tailored for who she is instead of trying to fit ourselves into the boxes that other people are or the way that things have been described for other people. So yes, this is this has just been such a fun week of these astrological conversations and, and the examples of the ways that astrology can really just help shift your perspective on yourself or your life. And I'm just feeling so blessed that I get to have these conversations with people. And um, if you are new to the podcast, um, you should know that we do talk about more than just astrology on this podcast this podcast, but I do like to start near the beginning of each episode with a bit of an astrology, or I call it the astro check-in. Um, what's happening astrologically, something that we can kind of be aware of and then see how it shows up in our life or if it's showing up in our life. And now we do spend a lot of time during these astro check-ins talking about the moon. So Every single month we experience a new moon and a full moon. And so on a weekly podcast, we're talking about that at least every other week, most of the time. Um, but this, this episode during our astro check-in, I want to talk a little bit about a big conjunction coming up. So a conjunction in astrology is when two planets are in the same zodiac sign at the same degree. So essentially they are kind of lined up exactly. Um, from our point of view here on earth. And we have a really big conjunction coming up. Conjunctions are usually quite important. Um, They just bring two different energies of the planets and in one zodiac sign and create a really strong new dynamic. They're often favorable dynamics, although it kind of depends on the planet. So we are getting ready for a conjunction that happens about sometime between 14 to 19 years. It kind of depends on the exact orbit path. Um, but it doesn't happen sooner than 14 years apart. So these are kind of kind of rather big moments. And this is the conjunction between the planet Jupiter and the asteroid Chiron. And what you have to know to begin with is that Jupiter, wherever Jupiter is, it signifies some kind of expansion where things just opportunities get bigger, things get bigger, abundance gets bigger. It's a lucky planet. So it draws luck and abundance and faith and clear perspectives, you know, all, all kinds of, um, shifts that are for the better in a more like spiritual, more open, um, more expansive, and honestly, usually more optimistic kind of way. And then we have the asteroid Chiron, which is often called the wounded healer and it is a it is a planet that signifies deep deep healing but where there is deep healing there is usually great pain 
or a deep wound. And so often when we look to Chiron, we are able to notice the areas of life that are extremely painful. And this can range everything from physical pain, like being in chronic pain, having a disease or a disorder, just any kind of ailment, specifically that is long-term or reoccurring. But even more so, it usually connects to the emotional parts of our wounds, the vulnerability that we feel, the sensitivity that we have, the way that we've been trapped or that we've been hurt. And again, not just one time in our life, but like that reoccurring wound that continues to, if it gets touched, it it kind of reopens again and again. And the kind of healing that has to happen for each of us in these areas is deep healing, the kind of healing that usually does transform us into a completely different mindset. So these two planets are meeting together in the zodiac sign of Aries, this zodiac sign that is associated with beginnings, initiating things, um, being a pioneer, being an innovator, carving your own path, doing so with um, like full confidence in yourself. Like, why can't you succeed? Like, of course you're going to succeed. You're blazing your trail. So what happens when all three of these things unite right here? Well, it is my guess that you're already noticing these themes play out in your life because this conjunction is going to become exact on March 1st. So in just a few weeks here, and we probably have likely been feeling these effects since the beginning of January, and we might still feel them all the way through May because Jupiter is not a very fast moving planet, nor is Chiron. So this the exact conjunction matters, but the feeling of it already is close enough in the sky, aligned enough um, that we're feeling the effects of it. And it's very possible that the effect of Jupiter is kind of expanding the places that you feel wounded right now. Um, Your fears are possibly getting kicked up and you're feeling like you have this opportunity to be more courageous to take a new risk when it comes to things that you would have stopped yourself from doing before because of especially subconscious fears, things like that. And the other thing we're going to be noticing here is the way that taking the adventure, so these Jupiter themes of traveling, of higher education, of going on a spiritual journey of some kind, that these things can oftentimes create a path for our healing in this strange way. I've seen this over and over. Um, People will go on a journey, they will leave and their mind will be expanded and they will shift something that's been going on inside themselves, something that they couldn't heal where they once were. So this is, this is very interesting. And, And one thing that I hadn't really looked at until I started to prepare for today's episode and knowing I wanted to talk about this theme is when was the last time this happened? Um, This can be a really good practice in astrology because you can, again, start to see patterns. This is one of the reasons why I'm such a big advocate of keeping track of what happens through each moon because in the lunar cycle, every six months we experience kind of a reverberation of what was happening six months prior because for like right now, next week, we're going to have a new moon in the sign of Pisces. And that's going to bookend with an experience we have in August is when we have the full moon in Pisces. So I love keeping track of it that way. But the other thing we can do is we can look to the last time these big conjunctions happen and start to see patterns in our own life. So you might this week want to reflect on what was happening for you in 2009. In 2009, that was the last time that there was this Jupiter and um, Chiron conjunction. And I will share with you, for me, 2009 was a very big year for me. It was the year that I graduated college. Um, right after I graduated, we you know, packed up a car and drove to Silverton, um, some college friends and I, and we spent the summer living in the mountain towns, helping kids. Um, we were running a theater camp during the day, and then we were doing live performance theater at night. And it was such a unique and special time in my life. And it was also one of the most challenging moments of my life. I was you know, being cracked open in so many ways. I was so fearful about what the future held. And I was clinging on very much to this love that I had for 
this guy, this amazing playwright. He was a strong colleague of mine. Um, We were really, really good friends. We always had the most amazing talks and we just had this easy chemistry that I, I really loved and I loved him. And I thought that there was a possibility that it could work out for us. And it didn't. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Um, Totally fine now, right? But at the time, what I didn't know is that that summer, he had been becoming romantically involved with one of our other friends in our friend group. And I didn't find out. They had they had kept it under the rug, like right in front of my face. And, um, you know, your intuition always knows something. So after we got done with Silverton, we came back. We were all, you know, still trying to be friends. Um, but you're going in different ways as you separate after college. And I just... I knew that something was going on, that I wasn't being treated the same, um, even as a friend. And I thought I was crazy. I was like, maybe I'm just so into him that I just can't accept this friendship as it is. Like, I I don't know. So I kind of broke things off in a way of just being like, this isn't going to work even as friends. Like, I just, this isn't working for me. And I found out a few months later that um, that's when everything came out, that he had already been in this relationship with one of our friends. And that was one of those experiences that um, it did aggravate one of my deepest wounds, you know, like this fear that like of rejection inside of myself. And I will say that that recovering from that heartbreak was one of those where I truly learned my own resilience. I that was the beginning of, of many iterations in my life where I felt pain so badly. My heart hurt so bad, but I knew that if I could get through that, that I could get through anything. And I knew that if I could come to a place to be open to love again, after I felt so hurt from that, that I could risk being hurt because I knew my own regenerative power, if that makes sense. And I don't know that maybe that sounds a little bit silly because it wasn't even like a mutual love relationship. You know, I went through many years of uh, unavailable love. That was the story of my life in, in very obvious ways and then very covert ways um, until, you know, I met Dave and I met Dave when I was right at the beginning of my Saturn return. I was in my late twenties. So you know, it's it's fascinating to have these themes come back up. And I've been thinking about how ironic it is that that was the year that I didn't live in Colorado. And right now, Dave and I are in the middle of some pretty serious talks about um, possibly leaving Colorado. And so I'm I'm myself kind of whoa, like this is, this theme is shining and this is a possibility and on this horizon. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm kind of grateful to sit here in reflection of this conjunction. And I hope that you do the same. Just think about, especially the middle of 2009, um, any themes that came up, you might need to go back to old journals or, or just really ask other people who have been with you in your life, like what was going on that year? And just notice and see if it sparks anything that is kind of a theme that's repeating or in a different way now. And um, yeah, that's that's your astrological assignment should you choose to accept it. Now, the last thing I will say before we really dive into the heart of today's episode is all month long, so all February long, I'm doing um, special mini readings. So especially if it's something you've been wanting to give yourself for a while, something to maybe even look at this theme in your life very specifically. Um, I'm doing mini readings for $25. So 20 minute readings for $25. If you go to a bit from within.com, which is my website, you can go to like um, slash links where I have a bunch of different links, like sign up for my newsletter, uh, moon affirmations, but also right there, you can click on book a, a mini session. I also have the link to a longer session if you're just ready to dive deeper. Um, I just wanted you to know that that's available to you right now. And I will also say that the new moon is next week on February 21st. So if you've been contemplating taking 
um, your lunar ritual practice to the next level and understanding a little bit more, not just how to work with, you know, beginnings and then letting go throughout the month, but having that specific idea of how to integrate what's happening astrologically with that. Um, I create a brand new lunar guide every single month through the Patreon. So this would be a great time to try a free trial through our Patreon, see what kind of self-care tools are available there and get your copy that's coming up of the Pisces lunar cycle guide. It's going to have a new moon ritual, a full moon ritual, some Pisces self-care information, just all kinds of um, fun things that you can inspire your self-care practice, your mindfulness practice through the month ahead. You can check that out on patreon.com. So p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash a bit from within. So with that, let's just take a quick break. So what's funny about remembering that heartbreak story I just shared with you is that I remember very clearly, it was right around Thanksgiving of 2009, and I can't remember if it was one of my parents, I think it was my dad that first told me this phrase that stuck with me, that has stuck with me over and over again, and I remember sharing it with my friends at the time, and we were all like, oh my god, that is so true, and it was... You can live with the truth, but you cannot live with a lie. And I remember feeling that so strong in my bones because, you know, in this situation where you find out that um, somebody is, you know, having a relationship with somebody else behind your back, especially when you had feelings for that person or you, you were trusting your feelings with the person that they were with, very complicated, like that does not feel good. And they were lying to me. They were lying in front of my face. And one of the things that, um, the guy that I had feelings for, he kept saying to me like, well, we, I didn't tell you, or we didn't tell you because we didn't want to hurt your feelings. Um, as though that was a justification for lying. And the truth is the truth, funny. Um, the truth is they didn't want to go through the pain of becoming honest. Sometimes people lie because it's easier for them. They, they claim it's easier for you. But the truth is, is that when people are dishonest with you, it is never easier for you. I believe that you can always feel a lie in your bones. You can feel it around your body, or maybe that's just me, but I feel like you can feel it, but be, but you're in a way you're being gaslit because somebody is lying to your face and you don't know what to believe. Do you believe what you feel? Something's wrong, but you don't know what's wrong. You don't have any information. Or is it easier to be told something that's hard, but that you can deal with? And that's how I always felt like crystallized clear in this situation is I'm like, would I have liked to know that? No. Would it have hurt me? Yes. Would I have had some big feelings about it at first? Absolutely. Like those, those are true things, but you know what? It was the truth that I would have had to accept that I would have had to deal with. I would have had to integrate into my life. And that a hundred times out of a hundred would be the better way to go. So it's funny to me that this has come up because, um, The word honesty is a word that I have been feeling in a lot of my conversations over this past week. It's been a word that's been popping up. People in my personal life sharing things with me for the first time saying, well, I've been lying to you for years about this and now I'm being honest. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what does it mean to live an honest life? And, you know, we all have our own relationship with honesty. Some of us live very honest lives and some of us struggle with honesty. And I'm not here to judge where you're at in your relationship with honesty, but I do want to share a couple of things that I feel like are important about living an honest life. Like, well, what does it actually mean to live honestly? And what are the benefits of living an honest life? You know, for me, I would say that I've always been a rather honest person, Um, but I remember, again, this was sometime during college, I remember that I went through like a mini breakdown around trying to keep my like lies straight over silly things, specifically around 
feeling like I was letting other people down. So when somebody would ask me to go get coffee and the truth is like, I just didn't want to go, I would make up a lie. And, um, I will say that this was a learned behavior for me, not being honest about the reasons that you can't show up to things like immediately grip grasping for a lie and just letting that be your truth, even though it wasn't true. And so I did a 30 day experiment where I just was like, it doesn't matter how uncomfortable it gets for 30 days. Like I'm going to live in my truth. If I don't want to go somewhere, I'm just going to say that. If I can't go and I don't feel like the reason why is good enough for them and that makes me feel fearful of being honest, I'm going to allow myself to move through that fear and see what happens. Like, what do I have to lose? Like, none of this is high stakes stuff, right? This is silly college stuff. So I remember doing that. And I, it's funny because I haven't thought about this in a long time. But I remember my mind being blown at how good it felt to not be mentally trying to come up with the right lie. Um, like ev- everything in your life, it just, it became so peaceful to be honest. And I remember even after those, those 30 days came and went that I was very much maintaining that I would not go back to telling white lies about things to protect people, to protect myself, or it was just going to be the truth is how I lived. And then of course that was very much reconfirmed when I went through this thing about living with the truth. Like no matter how hard things are, it's easier to live with the truth. So I guess all of this brings up this question of like, what does it mean to live an honest life? And what does it mean to be honest? More than just letting the things that come out of your mouth be grounded in truth. It's also about your actions being grounded in truth. So to me, living an honest life is that your actions match your words and your your words match your actions. Kind of like what you see is what you get through and through. I think this is one of the first key indicators of living an honest life. And honestly, this one is an important like avenue for us recognize recognizing whether we are being honest with ourselves, because you know depending on the path that you've taken in life maybe you got yourself into a job that you absolutely hate well showing up acting happy to be at work is living a lie right and you probably feel living that in your body um even if you're masking your actions masking your words You are betraying yourself and you're feeling that in your body. And I think when we start, again, this is high level stuff, because as we start to think about that, it's not usually just as easy as just while throwing your hands up and quitting your job or starting a new career, especially depending on where you're at in your life. So again, this is a little bit complicated, but you have to ask yourself, well, what does it mean for me to live my truth? Sometimes you can put more energy into a different passion that you have that can counterbalance enough what you're not loving about your life. Or you can start to crack open a door that over the course of several years will lead to a new path, but it couldn't have happened in a light switch moment. You know, I would say that that is more of what I've experienced in the last year, just over a year, um, with my business. So I know that a lot of you listening know what I'm going through personally. Um, Recap for anybody who's new that's listening. This is the short version, but I have been a wedding photographer for the past 10 years. I opened up my business in 2014 and then I went full time in 2017. And so for the last six years, I've been running a full time wedding photography business and I had a breakthrough moment in December of 2021, where I realized that I, I was ready to close that chapter of my life. And so for the past year, all of 2022, I was working towards that and starting to transition because as a wedding photographer, you already have so many weddings booked. You can't just give up on all of that. So in a way, especially now that I'm starting to be through the other side of it, I recognize that pretending to love being a business owner for myself, even though I was under so much 
pressure every single day from multiple areas. I thought I was really good at that. And that is because I am very used to living on the hamster wheel. I am very used to feeling like being in chaos is feeling safe. And so all of these things that I thought were true about myself, which there's probably a case to be made for all of it, but I was lying to myself about being happy doing that because I thought I had to. I thought it gave me um, so much integrity, that it was so special, that I was um, good at it, that it was a really cool path, something that was unique, something to be proud of. And all of those things are true. I, I am proud of myself for what I was able to create and who I was able to connect with and how I was able to grow. I am so proud of all of those things. But I was lying about the stress that it was taking on me. And the honesty piece is something that unfolded slowly. It came as a knowing that I didn't want to keep doing this. And then it took a full year to keep going through the motions to, in my mind, I had to, living as an honest person and a person with integrity, I it was without question that I would finish all of those contracts. So doing the honest work, I was finishing those things. It took a long time. And now that I've had a little bit of space and over last weekend, it was my very first and last wedding of 2023 that I have for the first time in 10 years, I have no future commitments to weddings. I, I've, this is the first time I'm saying that actually. Um, I think that just that revelation has helped me to fully begin to understand the level of like secret dishonesty that I was living with. And I I share that because I want everyone to know, I want you to feel that too, that oftentimes the things that we are being dishonest with ourselves about, they're not clear cut. They're not simple. They're not things we just immediately switch, right? Like we don't just, it's not the same as being like, well, I lied to you when I said I didn't want to come to your birthday party. I'd rather wash my hair, right? It's not like that. Um, they're big things. They're things that do take time. They're things that take processing. They're things that take um, little shifts that reveal the truth to you. And I think that's really important to remember. And I'll say, I think the next part of living an honest life has a lot to do with your boundaries. Are you living a life where your boundaries are solid and stable? Because when your boundaries are always changing, and you're making exceptions for certain things um, and things are changing around, you're likely being dishonest in some way um, because your boundaries should be solid and stable for you and unchanging. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was going to say like maybe a little flexibility. No, like the more honest you are, the more strong your boundaries are. And this is an area again of my life where I did not grow up having that modeled for me, having strong boundaries modeled for me. So it's been a long time as I've come of age to even begin to know what that is. I personally have struggled with a lot of codependency tendencies and a lot of codependents struggle with strong boundaries. But if you think of somebody you know, um, maybe, I mean, honestly, maybe it's yourself, but for a second, just think of somebody that you know that has really good boundaries, that through and through, you know exactly what you can expect of them, exactly what you can get away with, what you can't, what things you're willing to, they're willing to talk about. Somebody that has strong boundaries is likely a person who is living an honest life in that way. They're being very clear with others about what they will accept um, and, and what works for them. And I personally have so much respect for that. When I really think about it, I see so much admiration because when you're constantly changing your boundaries or taking back things or accommodating for other people, you're not even prioritizing at all in any way what works for you. And paying attention to what works for you is part of being honest. So I think that's really something good to think about. It's a good entryway if you feel like you do live a pretty honest life. Maybe just have that that boundary check in with yourself and see if you're honest in your boundaries as well. Um, Of course, we can't talk about honesty without 
saying that you can't be honest if you're unwilling to have hard conversations. Now, I think that this is, I was going to say like a can of worms, but it's not. But it is it is an important aspect of this, that when you are going to be honest, sometimes you're going to disappoint other people. Sometimes this is going to lead to open disagreements about things. Um, are those things uncomfortable? Is it hard to disagree with people? Is it hard to disappoint them? Absolutely. And I think even when you're going into that, it might feel like a high conflict situation or even a low conflict situation. You may be a very conflict adverse. You might say, I hate that sort of thing. I just would rather do anything but that. In order to be honest, you have to be willing to share the truth. However, one thing that I have noticed throughout my life is the truth coming out with extra like swords. Let's just say like, sure, the truth can cut, but have you ever been on the receiving end of somebody sharing their truth with you that's just coming out as mean and cutting and, um, or maybe you've done this yourself. Like maybe when you get really triggered that that's how your truth ends up coming out is instead of holding the truth with kindness, with integrity, with fairness, with just being honest. Instead, you, maybe you have been the victim of when you're triggered, when you're in defense, you come out with these swords that just cut and you feel like in order to be honest, it has to be such this painful process. And it's, it comes out maybe with your jealousy or your frustration or your anger, your grief, like this happens. I've experienced this many, many times in my life of in, in different ways. I've also seen this. Um, and that's where I want to say that is not good honesty. I I don't know like a, a smarter way to say that. Like to me, that is just bad honesty that is, should not be tolerated in any way. Um, if you can tell by how charged I am, I've had some interactions this week where I've been on the receiving end of some really vile honesty. And what I will say from that perspective is when you're on the end of receiving <laughs> vile honesty, let's just call it that, it makes it very hard to know what part is truthful. There's probably some kind of truth there. Maybe the truth is concern. Maybe the truth is resentment. Maybe the truth is, it it can be a lot of different things. There's probably some truth there. But when it's coded and all of these things are meant to hurt you and cut you or manipulate you um, or make you doubt yourself, you know, I guess that's manipulation, then the person receiving that who's in a place of integrity trying to honestly listen, they can't receive that fully because they don't know what part is the truth. And I think that This is so important, whether you're on the receiving end or you're on the giving end, to remember that if you can't have a calm conversation, then it's probably not worth sharing the truth at that point. Um, At that point, it is not productive and it is honestly not fully honest either because true honesty is going to be able to be clear might be complex, but it can be very clear. And that's why it makes sense with all the things we've talked about prior to this, that your actions reflect your words, your words reflect your actions. In fact, you know, in these moments where you think of in your life where like a truth has been unveiled, like for going back to the example of like finding out that that whole summer in college that I had all these feelings for this person and they we're sleeping with somebody else that I was a close friend. Again, I knew that I felt that. So when the truth came out, even though I didn't like it, it was very clear. It all made sense. Um, So when you are, you know, spewing out vile honesty, there's probably not a lot of clarity as you look back 
into the past and say, well, where was the truth through this whole time? With vile honesty, like you can't pinpoint where the truth was. And most people are not that good of liars that that they can mask how they feel. In fact, um, with one of the people that I was talking to this week about who was taking a, an opportunity to be honest with me, there, that wasn't the first time that I had heard any of these things from this person. It was only the meanest time that they had told me those things under the guise of being honest. And I thought that was so interesting because, of course, the heightened um, communication around what they were describing was new, but not there was, but I already knew the truth underneath her thing. So when I looked back at that, while there was meanness, there was at least honesty backing up the actions of the past. I could feel it. And so I guess that's another interesting idea of understanding honesty, either in your body or as you're saying it, is that I do believe that when you're talking about honesty, that there should be some sort of through thread through the past where you can see where that lie was, where you could feel it underneath, or where you kind of knew what was happening all along. Now, again, if you're still listening to this, I hope, again, that you know that there's no judgment for any of this. Okay. The reason I say that and I bring that up at this point is because we are all fighting through our own battles. Like we all have our own pain, our own grief, our own triggers, our own things that are hard to talk about. And choosing how we show up to move through those things is truly up to us. And one of the things that I feel very clear on myself right now is that I cannot control other people. I can't control what other people think. I can't control how they feel. I can't control how long their process is going to be. I can't, I can't force people to be honest with me, whether it was five years ago or 10 years ago or two weeks ago or one day ago, I can't force honesty in anybody. The only person that I have control of is myself and me choosing to live with integrity and me choosing to live an honest life. And that is true for each of you too, whether you are choosing to maybe challenge yourself in this honesty area. But I truly feel like choosing honesty is choosing growth. Because when you, like I said, when you choose to be honest, you are likely going to have to enter into uncomfortable conversations where you are either explaining what you've been going through, maybe being honest about your fear of hurting feelings or your fear of rejection, there's going to be an intense amount of vulnerability that comes up when you have hard conversations. And I believe that when you finish that, when you finish being honest, when you finish that hard conversation, it should lead to a sense of peace. And if you haven't arrived at a sense of peace, then you haven't truly been honest. I'm trying to catch myself if that makes sense because it makes sense as I say it. And now I'm trying to say, is there a, is there a way that that is not truth? And I, and I don't know if you immediately thought of an example, will you please like email me or DM me on Instagram or something like I, I, I want to think about that a little bit more, but I think for me, as I think of this, like even in these hard conversations I've been having in my life, as truth has been coming happening at me, like I've also had the opportunity of how I'm going to receive that. And I believe in being an honest person. I live an honest life. Um, am I perfect? No, by no means am I perfect. But because it's easier for me, I live a very transparent life. I mean, hell, I come on here and of course I don't share all of the details and the who said what and all of that, but I live a very transparent life and I do feel like I'm a very much like what you see is what you get kind of person. So as I have been showing up in these tough conversations where people are choosing to be honest with me and I'm receiving that and I'm trying to hold my own boundaries and make sense of this all and and there's a lot of contention and disagreement and all of that, 
I feel like I have been able to show up in my honesty. And I, as much as the aftermath is maybe a little painful or a little hurtful, but as we've had these interactions, these conversations, and I've been truthful and honest in return, what I've noticed in myself is like boundaries are coming up and I am being very clear that what I've said is also in line with what I've acted on and and vice versa. And I am trying my best to be as honest in return with these conversations by, but not vile honest, but navigating these tough conversations honestly. And I will say that when I hang up the phone or when I complete that conversation, that even though I might feel hurt, that I still do feel at peace because I am sure of how I am navigating this and I feel confident in that. And that leads me to this final piece of what does it mean to be honest and how does it feel? I think that being rooted in self-confidence is an absolute like after effect of living an honest life. When you are being honest, you do feel confident in yourself. You carry yourself confidently. You're not worried that somebody's going to catch you in a lie um, or that somebody's not going to believe you. It's like, if they don't believe you, it doesn't matter. It's no skin off your back because you are being honest. And that leads to a strong sense of like carrying your heart high and being truthful and living that truth. Um, And you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry if people don't like it because you are sure. And that is an invaluable thing. (sighs) I mean, honestly, as I say that, like it helps me, obviously I'm navigating some interesting things right now. And I just, I want peace. I, in fact, something I've been sharing with Dave is that, and I will all happily share this with you too, is that For my whole life, but especially my 20s into my 30s, I've been on this journey with my self-worth, trying to feel like I am good enough. And I feel like that work has finally started to pay off enough that now the work has shifted to be, not only do I feel like I am worthy, but I also feel like I've come into a, a new journey of learning what it means to trust myself. And I will say that I've been working tirelessly on building this really strong sense of I trust myself. I don't care what other people think of me. Of course, that's hard, but I'm really working on it and I've been working on it. And as I work on that, i am become more stable, more strong, and I, I've learned how to trust myself. Even when everyone else says, like, you should keep running your business. You're so good at it. I trust myself. No, something inside of me says it's time for something different, that I want something more. Um, Things like that. Like, that's just going back to that example since I shared it earlier. And I think that for me, having that sense of self-trust, understanding my sense of self-worth, like, this all goes into that peacefulness that I feel of living an honest life. So I don't know. I hope that today is a bit from within. While it feels a little bit hard right now to kind of put a through thread through the whole thing, you know, um, I hope that it connected to a bit from within you, wherever you're at on your journey, whether you're also navigating tough conversations or whether you're questioning how honest you've been with somebody else. And I hope that it gives you a little bit of perspective and just helps you remember that real honesty will leave you rooted and peaceful. Um, And we can live with that. We can live with the truth, but we cannot live with a lie. So with that, we will end today's episode. Let's let's do a card drawing, shall we? Um, This has been one of my favorite decks. It's the Namaste 48 Stressless cards. And I swear they've been they've been magic. Um, We'll shuffle these and see how the universe wants to contribute to today's conversation. The power of breath. 
Relax your face. Breathe in through your diaphragm. Every time you breathe, notice how powerful you feel. Breath takes in energy. Air gives us what we need to live. It fills us with power. Feeling the power of each breath allows us to charge ourselves like we charge our cell phones. Breathe this way for eight minutes and fill yourself with power. This will help you relax your body and power up your mind. Well, that's perfect because I'm about to go teach a yoga class. And so, you know, we're going to be breathing like that, relaxing our bodies. Um, so I, I, I love that. But I also love that if you are in a moment where you're wondering, should you be honest or should you choose what might feel easier, what you're navigating? I love the idea that if you come back to your breath and you come back and relax your body, that you're probably going to be led to the decision that has the most integrity. We have to do that from a place of calm, of steadiness on the inside. Mm, Beautiful. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for letting me share this with you. I hope that it was interesting and valuable. I hope to connect with you again soon. So I will be back next week. So until next time.